Hello, I'm Professor David Cameron, uh, Professor of Oncology at the University of Edinburgh, and I work as a breast cancer medical oncologist. At this year's BGICC meeting in Cairo, which of course was held virtually, unfortunately, I was asked to talk on the topic as to whether or not chemotherapy in luminal breast cancer is simply a treatment of last resort, or whether in fact it should be used perhaps more judiciously earlier in the treatment pathway for patients with metastatic luminal breast cancer. So my talk focused on the metastatic situation. Others talked about the role of adjuvant chemotherapy for luminal breast cancer. And it's important to remember that for luminal, potentially endocrine sensitive breast cancer, the primary modality of treatment is usually endocrine therapy based. In the past, it just used to be endocrine therapy, but of course, we now have other agents, particularly CDK4-6 inhibitors, but also everolimus, that we can add to endocrine therapy to make a more effective treatment for patients with metastatic breast cancer. But in the context of that, what is the role of chemotherapy? I was arguing that it was not just something you did when you ran out of other treatment options. The reason for that is, of course, that chemotherapy, when it works, can work more quickly than endocrine therapy. And for some patients with potentially endocrine sensitive breast cancer, especially if you are concerned that it may not in fact be that sensitive, chemotherapy offers a route to faster palliation. I presented data from chemotherapy in breast cancer that when that chemotherapy shrinks cancers, there is significant reduction in the symptoms patients have from their metastatic breast cancer. And by and large, patients feel the chemotherapy has been worthwhile, even though, of course, it does usually cause more side effects, more toxicity than endocrine therapy. One of the problems is there are very, very few full-blown phase three studies of chemotherapy against something else in patients purely with luminal breast cancer. But despite that, I think we can abstract from most of the other studies to demonstrate the efficacy of chemotherapy for these patients, the reduction in symptoms it can cause, and for patients with disease that is either endocrine insensitive, and that's not just because they've run out of endocrine therapies, it can also be disease that relapses quickly on adjuvant endocrine therapy, or did not respond at all to the first line endocrine therapy, chemotherapy may be a better route to reduce the tumor burden and reduce symptoms than trying another hormone therapy. And perhaps cheekily, I closed my talk with a quote from a patient. I'd been managing her some years ago and she'd been on chemotherapy, which had worked, had caused toxicity, including hospital admissions. And as we often do, having got tumor shrinkage with chemotherapy, we switched to the use of an endocrine agent and in her case, it was an aromatase inhibitor. I saw her in clinic after a few weeks and she looked at me and said, why did you put me on that? And then she named the drug. It's far worse in terms of side effects than the chemotherapy you had before. Now that's an unusual response, but it's a reminder. What patients want is a tolerable treatment that causes symptom reduction, improvement in quality of life. And that may sometimes be chemo and not necessarily running through all possible lines of hormone therapy before you consider chemotherapy. So BGICC has established itself, I think, as a premier conference, particularly in the Middle East. Uh, we were told this year there were 6,000 attendees, so clearly it has a very international audience. And that causes challenges because some of the countries in that region have much more access to the more expensive drugs than some of the others. And judging how best to give advice on the treatment of a patient when one is not entirely sure of which treatments are available to that patient, especially if they have to pay for them themselves and or in the healthcare system, can be a bit confusing. And I tend to, to try and therefore drive home the principle of what one is doing. So for example, in my discussion of chemotherapy as a last resort or not, I wasn't particularly promoting any of the agents, and indeed, many of the agents we use are now off patent 
and therefore actually much cheaper than some of the drugs that you would want to add to endocrine therapy, such as CDK4-6 inhibitors, which are still, as it were, on patent. But I didn't go into the costs of the agents. I was more trying to get across the principle that chemotherapy should not always be seen as a treatment of last resort. And for some countries, it may even be seen as a cheaper alternative to something which is expensive and not necessarily more effective, but perhaps equally effective, which would be a combination therapy with a hormone drug. But it is a challenge. Access to different types of treatments, and indeed in some of the other talks, access to different kinds of diagnostic tests is variable, particularly in such a multinational uh, conference, which is pulling in, patient, pulling in attendees from a wide range of financial situations. I think the only other thing I would say is I think, as I sort of hinted there, I think BGIICC has established itself as a premier conference and the international range of presenters is now reflecting a very large audience. And I think this is fantastic to help inform the clinicians and subsequently patients in, in the Middle East as to the best way to manage breast cancer. Well done, the organizers. Mm -hmm.